When you approach any model, you need a plan of attack. If you just stumble into a project blindly, you'll end up with a model that's just a collection of fixed mistakes. And fixing mistakes just eats up time. If you follow a plan, you're in control, and good modeling is all about being in control of the process. So what is our plan of attack? Well, an object like this spaceship is different because it doesn't exist. This drawing suggests how things fit together, but we don't really know. So it's going to be a process of discovery, and we're going to have to work in a way that allows us to iterate that process effectively. So the first step is to block out the shape of the spaceship. Now the term blocking out suggests that we're creating a rough version of the model, but we're not. We're creating an accurate representation of the volumes of the object, so we can inform ourselves about its three-dimensional nature. Blocking out actually serves two very important functions. Firstly, the low-res model can act as a proxy later on in the process, so it can act as a modelling reference point on which to build the final model, and also as a low-res stand-in in layout. Secondly, and probably most importantly, this proxy model will inform us about the integrity of the design. Two-dimensional drawings may look right in 2D, but they may break down in 3D. Blocking out will find these flaws and allow us to rectify them before we start modelling in detail. So before we can start any modelling, we need to set up some reference images to work from. Now if you look in your images directory, you'll find all of these orthographic drawings of the spaceship design. So the first thing to do is to load these in as backdrop items. Now the quickest way to create a backdrop item is just to drag and drop the images from your machine into Modo. So navigate to where you have the images saved and just drag and drop them into the viewport one at a time until you have them all loaded in. So now we need to name these items so we can identify them. So click and hold on the item. Now we know which one this is by the image name, in this case it's top. So I'll just call that top, select the next one. And that one is side and no outrigger. The next one is side all. So just carry on until you have all of them renamed. So once you've renamed all those backdrop items, we now need to realign them so they're useful. So we'll start with the top. Now we need to be able to see that from the top view. So change the projection type to top. Now at the moment, you can see that that image is aligned along the x-axis. Now it's good modeling practice to always create things along the z-axis. So to change that, we're just going to type under rotation y minus 90 degrees. So select the next backdrop item. Now this is a side view, so we'll set the projection type to right. Same with side all, that needs to be right. Rear needs to be back. Outward again is a side view, so we'll change that to right. Front is obviously front view, so that's okay. And bottom needs to be bottom. And again, that's aligned on the x-axis, so just type in minus 90 degrees on rotation Y. Now at the moment all of these backdrop items are clustered around the center of the viewport which is really unhelpful. So what we need to do is move them to create a modeling area. So we'll start with the front and the back. So select front, hold down control and select rear. Now you should be in item mode anyway but if you're not make sure you're in item mode when you select those. Hit the Y key for the transform tool and we'll move that back so it's sitting right at the back of the top image and then move it up so the drawing is sitting above or on the positive side of the y-axis. So then we need to do the same with the side views. So select outrigger, side all and side no outrigger. Move them back on the x and then up on the y. Now when we're modelling, we don't want these reference images to be too loud in the viewport. We just want them to sit quietly in the background. So what I like to do is select all of them, come down to Properties, and set the transparency to about 70%. So with all of those selected, we can now organise them so we can manipulate them easily whilst we're working. So just hold down Control g and that will group them. Then click and hold on the group, and we'll call that reference. And now we can turn individual ones off. So for example, we're not going to need to see outrigger or side all at the moment. 
but if need be we can switch them all off just by hiding the group. Now when we're blocking this model out it's going to be useful for us to work in a quad view. So click on the model quad tab we now have four viewports and as you can see all the references reference images are in the correct viewport so in the top viewport we're looking at the top reference image in the front viewport we're looking at the front and the right the right and if we change that to back we see the back reference image and likewise if we change this to bottom we see the bottom reference image now we're almost ready to start making geometry but before we do anything we need to save our scene so go to file save as and I'll just call this spaceship Now when it comes to blocking out the fuselage we can break it into a number of separate sections. First of all we've got this main nose section which runs about that area. Then we've got this air intake underneath. Then we've got the cockpit area on the top. We've got these side pods and then finally this engine area at the back. So I want to start by defining this main nose section. So I'm going to start by running the cube tool and dragging out a polygon in the right hand view. So I have it going from the front of the spaceship to about halfway inside this engine area. Then bring the top down so it matches the top line of the fuselage. Now the bottom line is kind of hidden by this side pod. So let's go to the front view because that gives us a better idea of where that needs to be. And then drag out a cube on the X. Now you can see immediately that we've got a discrepancy between the two drawings. The top line of the fuselage in the front view is slightly different to the top line of the fuselage in the side view. Now these small discrepancies are kind of inevitable with the design being hand-drawn. So all you've got to do is decide which, dis which image you're going to go with and stick with it. So in this case I'm going to stick with the side view. Now that's the basic shape in place but we need to deform this to create the point. Now to do that we're going to need more polygons. So I'm going to set the Z segments to 12 and the Y segment to 2 and then hit spacebar to drop the tool. Now before we deform it there are a few polygons we don't need so go into polygon mode and in the perspective view we can just select all of these polygons and also those two polygons at the back and hit delete. So now we can deform the shape so let's go to the front view. Now we need to imagine that we've got a line coming down at that angle and it's going to hit that edge running across the middle. So I'm going to right click and lasso all those polygons, hit the W key and move those polygons over. So we've got that line through there. So go to edge mode and double click on an edge on the top to select all of the edges running along there. And then we'll go to the top view and we need to move this over so it lines up with the corner of this air intake. So hit the W key, click in the viewport and we'll just move that over so it lines up there. Now all of these edges below or in front of this air intake we're going to need to deform them to create the angle but above or behind the air intake we need it to be straight. So to ensure that I'm just going to lasso that edge loop, hit the W key and move it down to the corner of the air intake. So now we need to select these edges again, so select one, hold down shift and select another one and hit the up arrow until they're all selected. Then go to fall off and select linear. Just zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So drag your fall off out from the top to the bottom. And we want the shape to be linear, so change that to linear if it's not already. And hit the W key and move that edge over so it lines up with this line at the nose. So with the fall off still active, select these edges along there, keep the fall off in the same position, hit the W key and then move those edges over. So then come to the side view. Now we just need to move this fall off. So I want the start of the fall off to be at the front of this side pod. Hit the W key and move that edge up. Now that edge is a little bit too straight. We want it to be a smoother curve running up there. So I'm going to change the shape preset to custom and I'm just going to increase the out. And You might need to go all the way to one but it just creates a bit more of a curve running up into the nose. 
So hit spacebar to drop the tool and then hold down the right mouse button and lasso the edges at the top. Keep the fall off in the same position but change the shape preset to ease out. Then hit the W key and move those edges down. So now we can do the bottom. So we need to move the fall off. Move it to about there. Then I'm going to right click and lasso all of those edges. Hit the W key. Now if I move it up you can see with the shape preset set to ease out. It's creating too much of a curve. So I'm going to change it to custom. And that flattens it off a little bit. It's still not perfect around about here so I'm going to grab the end of the fall off and pull it forward until the curve matches the drawing. So we've got one more edge to do so let's go to the perspective view. I'm going to lasso that edge and then we'll go to the top view and I'm going to move the fall off to the front of the air intake and to there. Keep the shape preset that's custom for now and move that over. And you can see there's too much curve in there, so I'm going to change it to linear. And that needs to go in to create more of a curve at the bottom. Now to increase that curve, we come to the side view we now need to move it up. So all we need to do now is fix the nose. So hit escape to get rid of the fall off, deselect the edges, go to vertex mode, select that point, hit the W key and move it up. Now if you go to the side view, a better idea of what's happening, we can select that point and move that one up. Just got the top view. That one needs to come right across, like that, and then select this point, and that one needs to come right up like that. So to make the curve a little more sweeping around the nose, I'm going to go to edge mode and select that edge, hit the W key, move that edge back. And select that edge, move that down a little bit, select that edge, move it back. And then you just might need to massage these points a little bit. So I'm going to hit the T key for element move, grab that point, and move it up. Grab that point, move it back, and move that one forward. Just creates more of a curve at the front of the nose. When we hit the tab key, you can see the whole thing smooth off to a nice point. Now I know from the drawing that the underside of the fuselage is quite smooth and rounded, whereas the top has a hard line running down the edge. Now I can define that quickly using P subs. So if I go to edge mode, I can select all of those edges. Let's go to polygon mode and hit shift tab to go into P sub. Back to edges. Then I'm going to run a linear fall off and dragging drag it from the front to about where the gun is. Then I'm going to go to vertex map, edge weight tool, and click and drag in the view viewport to add some weight. You only need about 30%. And if you move the fall off, you can see the weight being applied along that nose. So I remove the fall off. And if you want to see a little bit more definition in that edge, you just need to increase the subdivision level. Let's try three, or maybe four. Okay, there we are. So for the time being, we'll just recruit, reduce the subdivision level to three. And we just need to mirror this over. So in edge mode, I'm going to select all the edges in the middle. Make sure they're zeroed on the X. So we'll go to vertex, set position, zero on the X. Deselect the edges, then go to an origin action center, duplicate and mirror.
So that's the first part of the fuselage created. But one thing I want to draw your attention to, when we subdivide that mesh, you can see the shape on the top view has changed slightly so it's not matching the reference image. So double click on that edge loop to select it, hit the R key, and to fix it, we'll just scale that out so it again matches the reference image. Okay, so now file and save incremental. So the next piece to model is the air intake underneath the fuselage. And this is fairly simple as we can derive it from a cylinder. So go to add item and add a new mesh layer. Go to the front view, run the cylinder tool, leave the sides at 12 and the seg segments at 12 and drag out a circle so it matches the whole of the air intake in the front view. Now make sure it's zeroed on the expositional channel. Move it so it's at the front of the air intake and then expand the cylinder backwards. Now if you go to the top view and change the view from top to bottom you can see how this air intake sort of narrows to a point. So we just need to place the back of this where that point is. So now we can just deform it with a fall off. So I'm just going to move it down because remember I'm using the side view as my main reference. So I'll run a linear fall off, drag it to about there, hit the R key and in the front view scale it on the Y and the X change the pre shape preset to ease in. So it's space bar and drop the tool and then move the fall off to there. Hit the R key again, scale it, scale it in on the Y and the X but this time change the shape preset to ease out and scale it all the way down to a point. So finally we just need to shape the front of the air intake and I'm going to do that manually with element move. So I'm going to hit the T key in the side view, I'm just going to grab these points and move them. So at the moment this polygon at the front is a big N-gon that's been distorted really badly. So I've got the polygon mode and with it selected hit delete. Go to edge mode, double click on the edge loop, hold down control and deselect those four edges at the top and the bottom. Go to duplicate and run bridge. Have the segments on two and the mode on linear. Click in the viewport and go to Vertex, Drag Weld, and just weld the endpoints. To fill the gap. So I just want to even up the polygon density across here. So in Edge Mode, I'm going to double click on that edge loop. Go to Edge and run Slide. Just move that forward and do the same with the one next to it. And maybe the other one as well just evens up the density and keeps the surface nice and smooth. So now we need to create a hole in the front of this air intake, so select the polygons, hit the B key, click in the viewport and set it with the red handle, hold down shift and click in the viewport to reactivate the tool and hit the W key, move it back on the Z, hit the R key and then scale the Z channel just to flatten it off. So now we can hold down shift tab, control X to cut cut and paste that, Control v to paste into that layer. Now if we hide the reference and look underneath you can see that that really isn't coming to a point at the end there so we need to fix this. So select that polygon, hold down shift and hit the up arrow to expand the selection, bring back the reference, go to the bottom view and you can see the shape that it needs to be, run a linear fall off, drag it from the bottom to the top set the shape preset to linear, hit the R key for the scale tool and just scale it until it matches the reference. It just be, needs to be much more pointed. Okay. So the final thing we need to do is weight the front of this, but we don't want it to be completely sharp. We want it to be, have to have some kind of radius to it. So in edge mode, double click on that edge loop on the edge weight tool and put about 7% and double click on that one edge weight tool and put about 
15 percent 1315 so it's just got a nice radius to it and that's the air intake done so file and save incremental now we've got quite a few interesting things happening on the nose of this spaceship we've got this bump on the top we've got these gun pods on the side and also this line running across the nose now i'm not going to bother defining that line at this point that could always be a texture later on but i do want to create these bumps so let's go to a new mesh layer i'll go to the front view and we'll start with the gun pods now we can define this gun pod very easily with a cylinder so run the cylinder primitive keep the sides in the segments at 12 hold down control to constrain the proportions and drag in the viewport and just place it let's go to the side view move it back and move the whole thing back until it cuts through the geometry in the background okay spacebar drop a tool and select the polygon on the front hit the B key click in the viewport and inset it then shift tab to go into P sub select the edge at the front vertex map edge tool and just wait that to sharpen it up and then finally go to an origin action center duplicate and mirror control X to cut go to the other layer and control V to paste and the bump at the top can also be created using a primitive so go to another new mesh layer right click on the cylinder primitive and select the capsule primitive hold down control again to constrain the proportions and drag out the capsule make sure it's zeroed on the X so it's centered and we'll drag it back I need to change the end width size just to round it off at the ends there we go and when you've got that hit the E key click at one end and then just rotate it and in the perspective view you can see how that's getting to sink into the background geometry and just to finish it off on a linear fall off drag from one end to the other hit the R key and then we'll just scale it in to make it a little bit sharper now at the moment that capsule is a sub D so hit the tab key and then shift tab to, to convert it to a P sub and then control X to cut and control V to paste and then file save incremental so the next thing to tackle is the cockpit and again we can derive this from primitives so go to a new mesh layer I'm going to run the sphere tool make sure the sphere mode is set to quad ball and the subdivision is set to 6 hold down control and drag out the sphere now make sure it's zeroed on the X so on the side view I'm just going to position it on the highest point of the cockpit so it's okay in the side view if we go to the top view it needs to be much narrower so let's bring it right in so now we can just deform this sphere using a fall off so I'm going to run a linear fall off drag from the middle to the back hit the W key and move the geometry now that line isn't correct so move the fall off again and then change the preset shape to ease out hit the R key and then scale it on the Y and that matches much more accurately okay now for the front so move the fall off from the middle to the front have the shape as linear hit the W key and move and again move the fall off now you can see in the top view it needs to be much sharper so hit the R key and we'll scale it in on the X to sharpen it right up and then we'll change the shape preset to ease out hit the R key and scale it on the Y so the whole thing is following the shape of the cockpit more accurately So next we need to create this piece at the back behind the cockpit. This is a little trickier. So go to a new mesh layer, 
run the cylinder tool and we need 50 sides and we just drag out a circle and we need to sh shape it until it matches the curve on the top of that cockpit. So when you've done that, select the polygon, hit the B key, click in the viewport and then move it out so it lines up with this line in the top reference image. Then hold down shift, click in the viewport, inset it and move it out. Shift click, inset it and move it out again. And you just want to create that angle. So you may need to adjust it a little bit until you're happy. I'm just going to select that edge loop and move it out a little bit. There we go. So now you'll be left with this huge circle in the scene, but don't worry. You just need to right click and in polygon mode lasso what you want to keep. Hit the open bracket to invert the selection and then hit delete. And I'm just going to come in here, hit the T key for element move, grab this point and make sure that that lines up with the front there. So now we can go to an origin action center, duplicate and mirror. Then in edge mode, select those two edges, duplicate bridge, two segments and a mode on linear. Click in the viewport and go to vert mode, select those two vertices, go to vertex and join average. Then hit shift tab and in edge mode double click on these edges. Go to vertex map edge weight tool and add some weight. So the final thing we need to do to this cockpit is to find these pillars. And we can do that by going to a new mesh layer and we want to hide everything apart from the oval of the cockpit. Come to the front view, go run the cylinder tool and hold it down control, I'm going to drag out a cylinder. Probably only need 25 sides and we only only need one segment. The thing to, thing to ensure is that, it, that it's bigger the geometry in the background layer. So scale that one, select those two polygons and delete them. Select what's left, Control C, Control V to copy and paste it. Move that one back to define the other pillar. Hit the R key and scale it so it's the right size. Then select everything, go to snapping, background constraint, and set the geometry constraint to vector. Hit the R key and then scale it on the Y and the X. And those polygons will stick to that surface. So space file drop the tool and then escape to remove a snapping. Hit the R key again and just scale it a little bit more so it sits under the surface. And let's bring everything else back so you can see it. Then hit the B key, click in the viewport, hit the R key again and then just scale those out until they break the surface. Now the front one's probably going to be smaller than the back one so let's do the front one first. And I'll just scale the back one out a little bit more. So. Shift tab to cut piece up, select these edge loops and apply some weight. So that's the basic forms of the cockpit defined. I just need to bring it all together now. So let's select this layer, hit tab key and then shift tab. So everything is going to be piece up. Then shift select those three mesh layers. Control X to cut, go into that layer, and Control V to paste. And then File, Save Incremental. So the next thing to tackle are the side pods. So go to a new mesh layer, run the cube tool, and have 10 segments on the Z. And 
drag out the rectangle, have this section halfway into the engine, and then match the other edges to the reference image. Now make sure it's zeroed on the X, and then bring it out to match the top reference image. So now we can deform it, so I'm going to lasso the polygons on this side, run a linear fall off, and drag it from the air intake to there. Make sure I have the shape to ease out, W key, and move that over. And just adjust the fall off so the shape is correct. Spacebar and then escape to remove the fall off. And then we just need to adjust this point. So hit the T key for element move. And then we'll just move that into there. And come to the right hand view. And we'll select these polygons on the top. Fall off again. Again with the shape at ease out. Move that down. Adjust the fall off. I'll lasso these on the bottom. Move the fall off. And move the polygons. So now we can hide the background geometry and also the reference so we can see what we're doing. I'm just going to select these polygons in the middle and hit delete. And then we need to add an extra edge in here. So select two polygons and Alt C for loop slice, the mode on free and the count on one. And we want to place an edge in roughly about there at about 75%. Then we need to mirror this. So go to an origin action center, duplicate and mirror. And then if we hit every piece of this, you can see it's very, very rounded. So to fix that, we'll just select these polygons on the edge, hit the open bracket to invert the selection, then hit the B key and click in the viewport. Now you can adjust the inset to adjust the angle. We need it to be quite a smooth curve. And you've done that, just come to the back here and delete these polygons out. So just to finish this off, the reason why we put that extra edge just before we mirrored it is because we need to expose more of this air intake. So I'm just going to select those edges, hit the W key, and we'll just move that down. So with that done, cut and paste it all into one layer, and then save incremental. Now the engine area is a really interesting part of this model because it's made up of a number of different shapes which intersect each other. Now the drawings don't really indicate how they intersect each other so when we're modeling this we really are going to be discovering what the final model is going to look like. So we'll start with this really interesting shape on the side here. This really is one of the features of the whole design. Now if we go to the front view we can see that it's, this bends over and sort of wraps itself around the side pods. Now at the moment I don't think I've got enough of a curve on the side pods so I'm going to select two polygons on there, Alt C for loop slice, have the count of one and the mode on uniform, click in the viewport, then go to edge mode and that edge should still be selected, hit the R key and we just want to scale it out on the X to create more of a bulge and allow for that curve. So go to a new mesh layer, I'm going to run the polygon pen tool with make quads active, I'm going to click in the corner Click to one side and when I click again it creates a quad and I want to create six polygons around there and then just move the points so everything's nice and even. So hold down shift to reactivate the tool, click in the viewport and snap the point to there, snap the next point to there and then when you click again it creates another quad. Now we need to go right around the edge of this shape and create 14 quads. So when you've done that, hold down shift again and we just need to fill this hole. So click once, twice, and again. And when you get to this point, click on there and it'll fill that gap. Hold down shift again. Wait 
to there. Hold down shift again. And finally, all the way to there. Now, hit the T key, and now we just need to move these points around so everything's really even. So when you're finished, you should have something that looks like that. Now go to your front view, hit the W key, and move it over. And now we can use a fall off to shape it. So let's run a linear fall off, drag it out. Let's have the shape preset as ease out. Hit the W key, and we'll create that curve first. Move it to the bottom. Bring that around there. Come to the top view, again run a linear fall off, drag it to the front, and do the same at the back. So now we can extend this back through the fuselage. So in edge mode, double click on the outside edge, hit the Z key, the edge extend, click in the viewport, move it along on the X, then hit the X key and zero out the X channel. That will just flat, flatten those edges. Okay, so we want to move it to a point that makes sense. Now I think the most sensible place for this to be is right on that edge. So we've got a very defined shape for that air intake. Now one of the features of this area is the front around the intake is very hard edged, whereas the back is more rounded off. So to achieve that, hit Shift Tab to go into Piece Up, and in Edge Mode, Double click on that edge, hold down shift and select that edge. Vertex map edge weight tool and apply 20% weight. Then in polygon mode, select two polygons, Alt C for loop slice, count on one on the mode on free, and place an edge right over to one side. That just sharpens up the front. Now to round the back off, go to edge mode and that edge loop should still be selected. In the side view, run a linear fall off, drag it from the front to the back, hit the W key and then move that edge back. Now if you come to the bottom of this section, you can see we also need this point to be much sharper and we also need this edge running down here to be sharp but kind of blending out towards the back. So to do that, in edge mode, select, double click on those edges, select that edge and then that edge and then hold down shift and hit the up arrow to expand the selection. Then in the side view, Run a linear fall off from the back to the front. Then run the vertex map edge weight tool and click in the viewport and apply a 20% weight. Now another important feature of this area is this oval shape on the side which allows for the outrigger to be attached to the engine pod. Now I'm not sure whether I want that to be sitting on top of this section or slightly inside it on the final model, but I think it's important at this point just to define where it is. So let's go to a new mesh layer, run the cylinder tool, and I'm going to drag out a circle in the side view. Let's have 12 sides, and then with a linear fall off, just deform it into shape. So when you've done that, select that polygon, hit the B key, click in the viewport and just bevel it until it crosses through that geometry. Hold down shift and just inset it slightly. Shift tab to go into P sub. And then you can double click on that edge and add some weight. And then cut and paste that into the engine pod layer. So the next bit to define is this fin. Now this comes up directly from the engine pod. So a shift tab to go out of P sub. Let's go to the front view. And we need to slice it to create geometry that we can bevel. So run the slice tool, hold down X to activate snapping, and we'll just slice it down there. So in polygon mode, select all of these polygons hit the B key for bevel tool, click in the viewport, hit the W key and move all of them up. 
then hit the R key and zero it out on the Y just to flatten them off and then move those polygons so they match the reference image. Now as it stands the angle at the back is going to be more extreme than the reference image but I actually quite like that. So I'm just going to scale it on the Z slightly. If we come around to this side you can see we've got an area here that needs filling in. So let's hide everything so we can see what we're doing. Go to edge mode. Uh, so select all those edges, hit the Z key, click in the viewport, and we'll bring it down twice. And then with drag weld, we just want to weld these two points at the front. And then in this area at the back, go to vert mode, select those four points and hit the P key to create a polygon. So then we just want to hit the T key for element move and we want to move these points so we're getting a nice smooth arc down to the end. So when you've done that, select that edge loop, Z key for edge extend, click in the viewport, uh, move it back a little bit on the X, and then we need to position that at zero on the X axis. So you go to vertex, set position, zero on the X, just hit OK. So I've hit shift tab now, you can see everything smooths off. Now if I weight those edges, I'm going to get some problems here at the back. A lot of the edges will bunch up and cause some nasty pinching. So instead I'm just going to add, add some edge loops. So I'll select like two polygons there, Alt C for loop slice, count of one, the mode on free. I'll put an edge in there, select like two polygons there, put an edge in there, select like two polygons there, Alt C again, count of two on the mode on symmetry two edges in there and finally select two polygons on the top and put two edges in there. So to finish this piece off we can go to an origin action center, duplicate and mirror it and if we bring the rest of the spaceship back in, turn it over, you can see we've got some geometry that's not crossing correctly in here. So I'm just going to select these polygons, hit the W key Let's turn off the origin action center and I'll just move those up and when you do that it creates this really interesting line on the underside of the spaceship which is a line which I think I'm going to keep in the final model. So above these engine pods are these boxes that seem to contain lights so we'll do those next. So go to a new mesh layer, run the cube tool, we'll drag out a polygon, make sure it crosses into the engine pod and we'll go to the front view, move it into position, bring the cube back and make sure it crosses into those fins. So I've dropped the tool, I'm just going to select the points at the front here and move them forward to create that angle. Now the outside edge of this box needs to curve over. Now to do that I'm going to need some more polygons in here. So I'm going to select two polygons, Alt C, mode of uniform and account of four click in the viewport and then we'll go to the front view select all the polygons on the outside and run a linear fall off drag from the bottom and to the top and move it over to create that curve. Now before I turn this into a P sub I want to add a couple more edges so I'll select two polygons that way, Alt C this time I'll have a count of two and the mode on symmetry we'll put two edges in there and two edges in there. Now if I hit shift tab you see it rounds everything off. Now like the engine pod it needs to be sharp at the front and rounded at the back. So in edge mode I'm going to select those edges, vertex map, edge weight tool, click in the viewport with a weight of 20% and then to change the curvature at the back you can just double click on that edge loop and move it either back or forward depending on the curve you want to create. And just to finish off, come to the front view, we can select all the polygons on the bottom and hit delete and select all the polygons on the inside and hit delete. So for the back of the engines, go to a new mesh layer and then we'll go to the back view and run the cylinder tool, have 16 sides and drag out a polygon to match the reference image to the side view and just pull that cylinder out to about there. So select the polygon on the front and the back of that cylinder and delete them. 
then go to vertices mode, select the, the verts on that side, run a linear fall off, drag a fall off out there, and we just need to shape these points underneath the fuselage. So then go to edge mode and select all of those edges, hit Z, click in the viewport, and just bring them out slightly. Then hold down control and deselect the ones at the bottom. Then hit the E key and click at the bottom of that selection and just rotate those over. Then hit the T key and you can just shape those to match the reference image. So now we can thicken this to make it into a tube. So go to basic, run thicken, click in the viewport and bring it in. Now if you hit shift tab, you can double click on these edge loops and add some weight. Them. Then go to a new mesh layer and we need to create the internal section. So again run the cylinder tool, hold down control this time to constrain the proportions. Position it. Then select the polygon at the back. It's probably best to do this in the perspective view. Hit the R key and scale it. And you get to a point where it starts to cross. So you want to stop before it starts to cross into the other geometry. And then grab the polygon at the back. And we don't want to put too much detail in here, but just enough to suggest what's going on. So I've piece up that engine nozzle and weighted the edges and now we can bring these pieces together and mirror them. So the final section to create for the engine is this bit in the middle and that's really simple. So I'll go to a new mesh layer, go to the top view, run the cube tool and drag out a polygon. Now we need to make sure that each side crosses into the fins Go to the perspective view, let's hide the reference so you can see what we're doing. Hit the W key and we'll move it up. Now I want to keep it slightly higher than the, the sections on either side. Then go to edge mode, select that edge, hit the Z key, move that down into there. Select that edge, hit the Z key, and bring that down at an angle through that section. And you can use, I almost got it right, there we go, just move that back a little bit. And then you can hit shift tab, select those two edges and add some weight. And with all that done, shift select all those layers, control X to cut, go into that layer, control V to paste and then save incremental. So the final things to define on this model are the two outriggers on either side. So we need to be able to see them more clearly in the reference image. So I'm going to go to a new mesh layer, I'm going to hide what we've modeled so far, and then in the reference section I'm going to hide side no outrigger, I'm going to make side all visible. So the outriggers are made up of three sections. We've got what looks like a gun or an engine and all the pipes associated with it in the middle. And then we've got this kind of aerodynamic section that runs across the top and this piece along the side. So the first thing to define is this piece on the side. So I'll go to your side view and we need to define this in exactly the same way as we did with the engine pod. So run the polygon pen tool, have make quads active and draw out some quads to define the shape. So when you finish that it should look something like this. So go to the front view, hit the W key and move it into position. Then go to the basic tab and run the thicken tool. Click in the viewport and move the blue handle to thicken the whole shape. Then if you go to the perspective view, shift tab, go to edge mode and double click on the edges running around the whole shape. And then also these two corners, go to vertex map, graduate tool, 
and at about 20% weight. So if we go to the side view again, you'll see there's another shape that sits on top of that piece. So to define that, go to a new mesh layer, go to snapping and run a background constraint, a geometry constraint turned off. Then run the polygon pen tool again with make quads and again def define the shape with quads like we did before. So when you're finished, you should have a polygon structure that looks something like that. Now because we're using a background constraint, those polygons have been created in exactly the right place. So hit escape to get rid of a background constraint and then just select the polygons in the middle. Run a linear fall off from the back to the front. Hit the W key and move them forward. Make sure the shape preset is set to linear. Then go to edge mode and just select the edge in the middle and then move that out. So again, you go to basic, run the thicken tool, thicken it, make sure it's crossing into the geometry, then shift tab and again weight the edges around the edge. So the final thing to do is to shape it. So go to the top view and I'm going to move it out a little bit, then run a fall off from the middle to the back. Shape preset of ease out. Move it and with a fall off to the front. Move it and go to the front view. Run the fall off from the middle to the top. And then from the middle to the bottom. So the top of the outrigger can be defined in much the same way. So go to a new mesh layer, again run the polygon pen tool with make quads active, and define the shape with quad polygons. So when you're finished, you should have a shape that looks like that. And then go to the top view and just move it over. Then run a linear fall off with the shape preset set to linear. Run it from the back to the front, W key, and move it to match the reference image. So then go to edge mode and select all of the edges on the top. Then go to the top view, hit the W key and move them over. Then with the T key, move them back so they're lined up with this ridge running along the top. So when you've done that, go to the Duplicate tab and run the Mirror tool, and with the axis set to X, click in the middle of the outrigger. Now you may need to select that new section and move it so it's in exactly the right place, but when you're happy with it, Go to edge mode and in the front view, lasso all of the edges in the middle. And go to duplicate and run the bridge tool with segments set to zero. So then in polygon mode, select all of those polygons in the middle, hit the B key, click in the viewport, bevel them out, and then in the side view, hit the T key for element move, and then just move those points so they match the reference image. So when you've done that, make sure you delete these two polygons at the end that were created when we beveled it. Then go to the basic tab, and run the Thicken tool, click in the viewport and thicken it, but don't thicken it too much, maybe just 20 millimeters. Now if you notice we're getting some errors happening on the inside here. To fix that, change the max smoothing angle to 150 degrees. 
So then shift tab and then select all the edges that you want to weight. some weight. So the rest of the outrigger can be defined very simply just by creating cylinders. We don't have to worry about any of the detail yet. Let's go to a new mesh layer and run the cylinder tool and in the front view hold down control and drag out a cylinder with 12 sides and in the side view just position it. Now you may have to scale it slightly so it fits inside there. I want this to be a P-sub cylinder, so select polygons on the end, bevel them in, shift tab, and select those edges and weight them. So now you can select that cylinder, control C and control V to copy and paste it, hit the W key, and then we can use this to populate other areas the outrigger. So I've managed to define all of that detail just by copying and pasting that cylinder and scaling it. So just to finish off we can bridge these areas and maybe up into there. So don't spend too much time in this area because we just want to suggest what's there. We can detail it as much as we like later on. Okay so now we can cut and paste all of that together and the final thing to do is to create struts which join the outrigger to the fuselage of the spaceship and again they're just cylinders. So go to a new layer and if you turn off side all and turn on outrigger, you can see we've defined here on the on the reference image where those struts need to be. So again, go to the basic tab on the cylinder tool, hold down control, drag out a cylinder, select the two end polygons, hit delete, then shift tab and then again you can just copy and paste these and scale them into position. So when you've created those struts cut them all into the same layer, go to an origin action center, duplicate and mirror and then cut all of those into the fuselage layer. And there's our completed blocked out spaceship. So I know what you're saying. You're saying, why have I spent all of this time creating this model if none of it's going to be used in the final model? Well, the answer is very simple. We're not guessing anymore. With a 2D drawing, we were having to make assumptions about its shape, but now we know its shape. The lines and volumes have been defined, and consequently, we can evaluate it properly. For example, you might submit this model for approval and the designer will say, well, yeah, I like the model, but I think those side pods should be a little bit shorter. So what we could do is just select the side pods and run a linear fall off. And because we're not tied into any complex topology, it's very easy to make that change. And then that change can be quickly evaluated. But this model also has two other very important uses. Firstly, if we hit shift tab, We've now got a low-res proxy model that we can use for animation or previs. But if we hit shift tab again, we've now got a wonderfully smooth and accurate reference model that we can use as a base when building our final detailed model. And that's what we're going to do next.